Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Fred Barrett, and I am the Emerging Media Manager for PBS Western Reserve, and I would like to thank everyone who's in attendance for today's presentation. This is the first presentation of our digital training webinar series, and we wanted to kick this off with the power of digital storytelling, um, which starts right now. So, when it comes to digital storytelling, there's a lot of people who are doing it and who need to have it done, looking to learn how to do it effectively, et cetera. And these people can include community partners, members, 
and individuals who are willing here to learn to how to create digital content for effective digital storytelling. In this series, we hope you will learn about digital content creation through website creation, video, audio, podcasting, and content strategy and more. Now, when it comes to the digital environment, the digital realm, you have the practices and the typical steps in doing a thing, but I'm actually going to go into the psyche and the power of the thing to do it strategically and more effective. Now, during this presentation, for everyone who's in attendance, feel free to submit any questions or comments in the chat box during the presentation. I will occasionally stop and address a comment or address a question to engage to increase engagement for this series. Now, the topics we're going to cover today, and I'm and even though it's an hour, we're going to have a, a quick run through through each of the following elements. What is digital storytelling? The definition of digital. The definition of story, the importance of story, the definition of telling, the purpose of storytelling. What is digital storytelling? Now, it may seem repetitive, but I'm going to go in a minute on how we're breaking this down. Then we have the purpose. The per tools, we're going to go over the tools. We're going to go to each benefit of all the tools, the benefits of website or blog, graphics and photos, benefits of video blogging benefits of audio podcasting and social media strategies. This will be a general overview of all these topics. And later on, additional additional episodes or webinars we'll do will go specifically into these different arenas. So as you're going or listening to this presentation, keep in mind, you are here for a reason. You have a story to tell. As I'm going through the different topics and the different elements that I provide, Think about what story are you looking to tell? Many people jump into digital storytelling not having a story. This first webinar, hopefully, will get you on that path of to figure out what story you want to tell and the purpose of your story. I'm going to start off with what is digital storytelling? Now, in my philosophy, I, I tend to break each word down of a component, especially in this digital realm. You have to really understand the basic layman's perspective of these elements to effectively to effectively do it so we have digital storytelling now if you look at it you actually have three words in digital storytelling you have digital you have story and you have telling as i broke it down here we're going to look at the definition of digital the definition of story and the definition of telling once i break this down then you will understand the impact that you, are, you can have on a community or your group. Let's look at the definition of digital. The definition of digital has many perspectives. It's really not just one. But the first one we're going to look at is digital can refer to information provided on the Internet. That's basics. Digital can also refer to information provided, received, processed, and stored on mobile devices with the internet. So the first aspect is really for desktop. The second part right now, everyone wants to develop digital content for mobile devices because you have quicker access to people. But historically, Digital means the use of numbers, zeros and ones. When you talk to IT people, computer, computers, but it also refers to the word digit. The word digit refers to fingers. Now, if you look at your smartphone, you have them in your hand. That's the basics of it. So digital, in short, means providing information to connected electronic devices in your hands. That's the basic strategy most people try to do. But again, we still need to have a story before we get to this point. Again, the last, this last bullet point, digital is providing information connected, uh, providing information to connect electronic devices in your hands. Now let's look at story. You're here for a reason, and you have a story to tell, but what story are you telling? Well, let's look at the definition of story. Again, there are many definitions. The first one, a story is a telling 
is the telling of information, experience, attitude, or point of view. If you're a corporation, you're trying to provide information or a point of view to your audience or to your target audience. If you are a community organizer and you want to change the attitude or point of view of a community, you have a story to tell. A story provides what we want or, or need. Now, me philosophically, every community, every culture is based on story. And in order to maintain that culture or that community, we need certain things or we want certain things. So we need a story to keep us in line to do that. A story is the basis of human expression that goes back to culture. A story is the journey of our lives. So again, telling of information, providing what we want or need. A story is the basis of human expression, how you feel, what you want to see, or what have you. And it's also a journey. Now let's look at the power of story. The power of stories help shape our perspective of the world. Now in this day and age, um, I've been hearing a lot of people saying, oh, well, I need to stay off of social media because there's a lot of information out there. It's a lot of stress. It can affect my mental health and, and, and et cetera. Right now, you have to, dis to develop a special place for your story to avoid all the clutter from social media. Well, in order to help with that perspective being shaped, you need to, need to get away and tell your story on your own platform. Stories help us understand other people and their perspectives. Now, with everything that's going on with COVID and a lot of people going digital, uh, you have different issues on social media. A lot of people have become disconnected and a lot of people have been misunderstood. So if you develop an effective story, you can reconnect the people by understanding those people and their perspectives. That's one a, a strong element of power of story. Stories pass down culture, as I mentioned before. Every culture is based on a story. If you want to change the culture of your community, change the culture of a corporation, you have to develop the story. Stories are universal. Stories help us understand our place in the world. Absorb it, understand the story, and realize that's the power that you're trying to embrace before you put it online. Now we're going to look at the word telling, the power of telling. So we went from digital to story to telling. We're going to come back to it. The power of telling, what does telling mean? Telling in its general sense is the sharing of something to other people. Every day you wake up, you tell yourself a story. You go to work, you're telling somebody, hey, good morning, what's going on? You start off with a story every day. You tell somebody something or share information every minute of the day. Telling means also having an effect or an impact. Now telling, somebody can have a story, but does it really affect you? Is it really impacting you? What does the story you're hearing doing? Now, when you're also developing stories, you have to provide that impact or a goal to what you want people to do. So this is the aspect of telling. What do you have something fun? Do you have something serious? You have to have a directive or a motive behind your story, which is telling. Telling can also mean carrying a great weight or revealing. If you have a community that has a certain perception of itself and they may not know something very positive about that community. Well, this has a great positive weight and be, and be revealing. And if you have a different story that is contrary to what the community has created, now it's re revealing. That's it's telling. Oh, you changed my perspective because you gave me impact and you told that to everyone. Telling is also the true nature of something. Now, one of my philosophies is that if the value of the community is based on a story being shown or told, if you don't show it or if you don't tell it, somebody else will. And if somebody else tells your story, it's a good likelihood that it won't be true. So telling is also the true nature of something. 
Now we're going to look at the power of storytelling. Storytelling is about making something clear to your audience. With social media and all the information you're being bombarded with, there's a lot of clutter, confusion, or what have you. A lot of clutter is unclear. Well, storytelling is about making something clear to your audience. Now, throughout this webinar series, we'll train you in several aspects of digital content creation on your own platform to have to create a clear focus for the people you are targeting. Storytelling can inspire and shape your audiences to families, groups, and communities. Again, social media, digital, a lot of people have become disconnected within their organizations or communities, especially being at home, not being around, a lot of disconnection. Storytelling can inspire to shape it back up. So, all right, so I'm seeing a content uh, come in by Mr. West. Sometimes I believe that a story is a slow burn. Every story needs an arc that helps the audience uh, pull a bigger picture from watching. Well, it could be watching, listening, or seeing, i.e. photos. We're going to get to that point uh, a little later. And with a slow burn, yes, you have to keep repetitive. You got to keep pushing it. So that's true. Storytelling provides a connection between people and ideas. It's the basis of all communications. Another philosophy that I live by or share is that when you look at the word community, the base of it is communication. But what is this communication? If you want to get people to move, changes perception of a thing, that's when you get into storytelling. That's the power of all this. Now, what is digital <clears throat> storytelling? Digital storytelling is a blend of video, audio, images, and text to bring your story to life. Now, what do I mean by to life? Well, in today's society, the norm, the digital norm, here's what I here's an example of this. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a minute from here and say, all right, let's say there's a <clears throat> a neighborhood that you hear people talk about and you wanna move to this neighborhood. Well, in today's digital realm, if you go to the internet, phone, desktop, however you access it, and you try to find any information on that neighborhood or that community, and there is none, the first thought process is that it must not be anything good or they do not exist. That they're digitally dead, deleted. Oh, it doesn't exist. I'm not even going to bother about it. So in this, in this day and age of digital content, Having information or story on the internet is imperative, meaning bringing it to a digital life. If you go shopping for a product, you can't find any information on it. You're not going to buy it. If there's not a voice or any information pertaining, pertaining to a certain thing, a thing in, does not digitally exist. So again, digital storytelling is a blend of video, audio, images and text to bring your story to life now in this webinar series we will walk you through the development of this to provide effective digital storytelling digital storytelling also provides you the the ability to share experience and stories so in many organizations from corporations to neighborhoods one experience can if that's the only one that's shared can really establish the basis of a story and everybody runs with it well, digital storytelling provides a alternative to change it if the story is not or the perspective is not where you want it. So you can share experiences and stories to provide many perspectives on that thing. Digital storytelling also allows individuals to use digital tools to tell a story. Now, before we get to those points, this is why we did this breakdown of digital story and telling. Once you get the practice of understanding what that aspect is and the steps to do it, then you get to the tools to tell that story. Now, there's the purpose of digital storytelling. So I'm going to stop right here. Everyone who has signed in to join this webinar, you sign in for a reason. If it's for your corporation, if it's for your own brand, if it's for lifting the voice or creating a perspective of your community, what is your purpose? 
That's when we want. We talked about the power of digital storytelling. So what is it that you're looking to do? So I want to take a minute and those who are in attendance, if you can go to your chat box, go to the chat box and submit any type of perspective that you're looking to learn and do for any type of organization. Take a minute and just share what story you're trying to tell in the chat box. So at this point, I'm going to play some more music, take a couple of minutes and please go to the chat box and submit any comments or questions during this process or during this, during this two minute break. Okay, let me see. And I've been reading the comments. Let me turn my face back on. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with, let me turn this down. Mark, gathering new storytelling ideas using digital tools, information on new ideas and ways to tell stories. You're in the right place, especially with the web series we're going to be doing monthly from this point on to build a customer base for a small business. So when it comes to customer bases and small businesses, you have the aspect of marketing. Now, now you have a term called story branding, where you create a story for the customer and you create the story where their destination and story is your business. We're going to be sharing aspects of that with digital content. Ms. Hill's story of connecting African Americans, their culture and history, digitally, that needs to be done really for all communities. Uh, personal reason, potential civics education site. We teach you the basis on laying out information where consumers can digest digest information effectively and also incre increase engagement. Uh, to Bernadette, I'm new to all of this and starting over in life. My reason is to learn anything you can teach me. You're in the right place. <laughs> Uh, you have uh, you got Laura, you have experience in technical writing, but now I've been drafting to writing for our agency communication tools, boss suggested 
right place, especially the next webinar coming up. We're going to go into techniques and writing for the web. Uh, Claudia, enriching people with God's word to share our church as a place of, for hope, uh, of hope for the lost. Hope to get them to take the next step, stepping into the physical doors. We are, all the elements that we'll provide will help you with that. Learning effective techniques from Susan for improving digital portrayal of classical music concerts and theater performances. Same thing. We're going to walk you through the steps in creating a digital journey and reaching the people with the devices and also getting people to share your content. Mr. West, want to learn how to build your brand to the industry standard. A uh, better way to understand it now, especially with the TV station. You're right, you're right in the industry, learning from us. And going back to my title, my title is Emerging Media Manager. So one of my goals is to help you take your content, whatever plateau you're at right now, and to emerge into another level. That's one of our goals here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the presentation, come back to some of the other comments a little, a little later in the presentation. So going back to the purpose of digital storytelling. Digital storytelling connects people. Whatever endeavor you have to connect them with community, corporation, individual, it's about connecting people and putting them on a journey. And in this case, a digital journey. What do you want them to do? How do you want to engage them? How do you want them to see you? Digital storytelling provides the sharing of ideas. Helps communities learn about each other. Many of your comments reflected that, connecting people, bringing people together, learning from each other. That's the connection with people. Digital storytelling builds value and credibility. Now, like I mentioned before, if you don't have any information on the internet displayed in a effective industry standard, you're actually hindering your value and your credibility. And throughout the training webinars, I will guide you on what the industry looks like and how to establish that platform for you to follow. The tools of digital storytelling. Now, we're just going to go over the different highlights, not the specifics, but just the highlights in this presentation, since this is the first one of the webinar series. Website development. Now, here I have website development, but you can also say blog. Now, there are more effective blogs being used by the industry today. Uh, for example, you got WordPress, which is really the, the top dog in website development. And then you also have a website like Medium, which a lot of people are going to, to provide written content. Graphic and photo. There are many platforms that you can go to and create, fact, create graphics, but effectively, how do you do that? Many don't know the effectiveness on grabbing a photo, placing text to provide an imprint on somebody's memory as they're scanning on social media. We'll create the strategies in doing that. Video blogging or vlogging. We have a template. Video adds a little credibility to all content because it's instant. But there's a standard templated way that you do it in the industry, and I will be providing that at a later date to add to your digital story. Audio podcasting, it's a trending aspect, but you have to do it in a quality or industry standard where we, when we will show you how to do that with the tools that you have. Social media content strategies. Now, this is not about you providing all your information on the internet. It's about you telling, getting all the digital content that you're creating for your own platform and strategically using social media for people to consume the content you're creating on your on your direct platform. And we get to go into that right now, the benefits of all these different things. The benefits of a website or blog. A website provides direct connection. Again, when you want to go search for a thing or learn about a thing, you go to the internet first looking for a website. A website provides value, credibility, and context. If you look at the industry from the CNNs of the world to the MSNBCs, when you look at the different websites, they all have a template. They all have a look. You will learn it in this webinar series. A website provides the control over your story. And I'm gonna stop right here. So a lot of organizations, they will provide information on the Facebook or the Twitter or whoever, YouTube, but there's a good chance that somebody might not like your content. 
they might not like what you said and they will block you. Or you have this invisible power that you hear all the time named algorithm. An algorithm is a very powerful digital being. It can block you, hinder your stuff, or what have you. So if you create your own platform to share your information effectively, you will have more control of your story. And also going back to the beginning of, you will avoid clutter so you can provide that clear story. You avoid the clutter of social media and you have more control of it. A website is a collection of stories that can make your organization or community simply look good. And when it all comes down to it, the value of a thing, the credibility, uh, credibility of things, oh, that looks pretty good. That's pretty much anybody's top effort in creating digital content. Now, if you have any other motives in creating digital content other than looking good, feel free to put it in the chat box. But I just simplified to, hey, look good, bow. <laughs> so you got um, graphics and photos. You don't have to be a graphic designer. Simple image, text placement will be enough to provide information, people to share it, or what have you. It's a science behind it. You don't have to be a graphic designer. And I will show you the steps in creating simple, effective graphics in a webinar down the road. But graphics and photos, the benefits of it, it provides additional context to your written content. Knowing how people consume information on online, you can pretty much get um, weary in just reading text. You need a breakup of that text, a photo or a video or audio clip or what have you, but graphics and photos provide additional context. So you have written content and you want someone to imagine what you're writing or to see what you're writing to get to the point, add a photo to add to it. Graphics and photos provide visual impact. Now, you don't have to be a photographer to grab a good photo. You can grab your phone, whatever you see, you can just present it to add to your text. Photo, the photo uh, has a thousand words, actually has more than that. But to direct people to your content, you grab a photo to add to your content that you're writing. Graphics and photos provide a moment to engage the reader's imagination. As a person is reading, as they're reading, they're creating a picture in their head. Some cases, the picture may not be the picture that you're intending, but a photo will help guide them in that imagination process for your content. Again, you don't have to be a graphic designer or a photographer to do this. I will show you techniques in other webinars how to do this. Graphics add credibility and navigation to understanding a story. In some cases, someone may have a some of the difficulty to really express what, what needs to be told and the story they're trying to paint in the person's mind, drop a graphic or drop a photo to help with that story. Sometimes the, the photo can really sum everything up from your text. So it's important to have graphics and photos. Benefits of video blogging. Video blogging provides the instant virtual word of mouth. You see the face, you see the words, or what have you. But studies are saying that with all of the zooming, with all of the TV watching, you have you're starting to have video fatigue, but it still helps. So when it comes to video blogging, it takes certain techniques that you can apply when developing content. Keep the video short, keep the video engaging, answer a couple of questions and lead people back to your content and the photos. You don't have to do a three or four or five minute news report or what have you but we will coach you through this so i know a lot of people teaching at kent state for years as i've done you have a lot of people weary or well, i'm not a videographer or i'm not a photographer i keep a simple process and effective process to prepare you to get your digital content out effectively by the time you get through through the webinars yeah you'll be a pro you'll be immersed to another level hopefully Video blogging provides an element of trust and credibility in today's digital environment. Everyone is either looking for video or text first. Look at the content that you absorb the most or consume the most on your phone. Do you read more or you watch video more? Then you will see how important video blogging is. Video blogging provides more exposure and interaction. 
We see it all the time. I do it. Now, if I got woke up this now, I woke up this morning, watched. I wasted about thirty minutes of watching frivolous videos on Facebook. <laughs> That's what I do, but I do read because I'm a journalist. But as you know, video blogging provides more exposure and interaction, but there has to be a purpose behind it. And that's what we are training you to do throughout these webinars. Benefits of audio podcasting. Audio podcasting provides an alternative to video. Here, there's a trend of people absorbing audio podcasting. Why? Because with a video, you have to sit and watch. Audio podcast, you can multitask. People started listening to audio books. They're looking for audio podcasts and provide information. I have shared many stories of, if you want to connect to a community, share community events, grab your phone, go to a website and start an audio podcast. In today's major media platforms, radio, radio is transforming. And in my opinion, it's losing that community touch. If you look at television, if you read the industry, a lot of people are being laid off in media. And there's a general approach to maybe uh, getting covered on the news, might be like the lottery. Well, it's up to you, those who are community activists, to provide these platforms. Ask yourself, when is the last time you've been to a radio station and actually got information about events in your local community? This is going back to the title of this presentation, the power of digital content, providing information, connecting people, providing resource. Audio podcasting provides an additional element of trust in today's digital environment. Well, you have a lot of people doing podcasts, you have a lot of people doing vlogging, you have a lot of, well, not too many doing websites, but you have to do it in the industry standard, in the quality, qualitative standard, to establish that trust. And especially if you're providing an effective or powerful digital story. Trust factor is one of the number one things to engage people. Audio podcasting is easier to produce and consume for listeners. So let's say you're a little nervous and doing video. Well, you can grab your phone, get a small USB, uh, USB mic for your phone record yourself. There's a couple of software platforms you can audit that you can edit the audio and place that audio from your phone to an audio podcasting platform. It's just that easy. And we will walk you through this process of using these tools in an effective, easy, not so technical, but impactful way in developing digital content. Now I'm gonna stop right here. If you have any questions or thoughts, um, take this next minute, and if you got any questions that I can answer right now, put it in the chat in, in the chat box. I'm gonna take this one minute to do so. Again, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box here about any anything I presented so far.
Okay. Um, Bernadette, uh, I think you said you, I think you mentioned that uh, earlier that you were new to this process. And yes, anyone who's new to digital, that's the first aspect that hits you, but you said it was in, in a good way. So hopefully it's intriguing you to keep learning and we will simplify the process. And that's one of my goals to take all the confusion of what may seem so highly technical to make it simple for you to understand and grasp. Because when most people start producing digital content, the, the roadblock of developing effective content is the nervousness of digital use or tools. Now here, see the, how do you keep the listeners interest in audio podcast from Kim? So when we start teaching about audio podcasts, for example, the first thing I teach is provide whatever topic you have, provide a question. You start off with a question. Hey, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about that? And then you tell the audience what they will learn from your podcast. That's one of the first tips. But when we get into audio podcasting, we will do that. A nice introductory intro to have people engage your content. And then at the end, you cap it off by asking people to come back and learn more or to share your content. So that's one of the tips we, we will provide and the strategies we will provide in web, audio, and blogging. Will you provide information or application technologies, editing techniques for these various modes and strategies for promoting listeners? Yes. Yeah, so this webinar here is a, a general overview of what we're looking to do. So for, for example, for applications, video, DaVinci Resolve, audio, audacity and different techniques on how to edit for those things we will provide all that all of this information you're seeking all right uh let's see i subscribe to the new york times podcast and randomly listen to others i did i switched to npr i have it on my phone uh you have the nigga my business has grown mostly from word of mouth i need to transfer my store to digital platform because it's more marketable and accessible to my existing and new audience this technical stuff is new to me, but it's necessary to take the business to the next level. So when it comes to the next level, it's about reaching your audience with the devices in their hands. And we will walk you through that, how to engage, how to tell this story, how to provide impact through all of the different elements, through the different webinars. Now, at a later point, we will have an extensive training program where it might be once a week or twice a week, three month program to really take you to that that level. Now, the general web, the webinars we have coming up will help you along that process, but at a later date, we will have an extensive training program for this. And we will have, we look to have classes at the station where you can come in and work on a podcast or you can work on your website. We are looking at that in the near future as well. All right, social media strategies. Social media strategies, the placement of your digital content on social media platforms not just providing all not just giving away all your content to those platforms you use social media to direct direct people to your platform where you place all your content for example uh medium is another platform i suggest people go to to provide their content their text or what have you if you're using media you, medium you can take that and place that on facebook instagram snapchat or whatever you want to use social media to drive people to your platform, not give all of your information up to or give it away. For example, uh, one business might set up and say, hey, I need to create a Facebook page and they will use their Facebook page as their primary website for their business. When it first started, that may have been that may have been a good idea. But now it's so much clutter and algorithms and all this other stuff on Facebook. It's a good likelihood that you won't be seen. Uh, another aspect is Facebook is going to remove the like button off the page. A lot of people get on Facebook, like my page as that as their business, their business platform or their business destination. You're going to have to start creating your platform outside of social media to be effective. Social media strategies provides additional exposure and engagement. It's an, it's a additional, not primary for exposure and engagement. Where in this case, we'll have a, when I'll teach you how to use graphics and photos. Let's say you create a uh, graphic or photo to put on Facebook to get people to come to your site outside of Facebook, away from the clutter. Or you might have a, a photo or image that you might use to create an event promo. This photo has certain dimensions. This is an example of what I'll teach. Has certain dimensions 
that some platforms automatically apply. And you can use the same photo across Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever platform you're on, and it's driving traffic back to your external platform. That's what you want to do in this day and age. Because it's social media is so crowded. Um, I've seen people on social media saying, oh, I don't see my other friends post or I don't see this post because the ad- algorithms do change. This goes back to what I was telling you about controlling your own story. You I like this one up. You want to control your own story and your own content, what you want people to do. If you're trying to get people to come to your business, you got to get away from the clutter and prepare them for your journey of the story you're telling. Social media provides a channel for your digital content, a channel, just an additional channel, a channel to come back to your platform. That's your total goal. So going to the beginning, the power of digital storytelling is connecting with people and taking them on a journey to your story. Now, when it comes back to the story and you're creating this journey, you have to imagine in your head, where do you want people to go? What do you want them to do? If you want community people to connect, that's the basis of your story. If you want internal people of your corporation to engage you, that's your story. If you have a business, that's your story. Now, these webinars will be provided to help you take people on this digital journey through the content, through their devices. That's the gist of all of this, the power of it. Again, most people start developing digital content without understanding the power. These webinars will be created for you to embrace the power and how to use it. Our next webinar, the topic will be writing for the web here. When? April 14th at 12 p.m. Most of our webinars will be at the same time, noon, about a good hour. You can register on this link or you can sign up as you did for this one. Or if you have your phone looking at this on the desktop, you can scan this QR code, which will pull the invite up. You can register for it. And after registering, you receive a confirmation email containing information about joining the webinar. So again, this presentation was to provide you the basics of digital storytelling, the power of it, and the scope of how it can be used. So the next webinars will specifically go into each area of creating effective digital content through PBS Western Reserve. And we will bring you up to the industry standard and hopefully provide you with the tools to achieve your individual goals. So as you can see, this is the last slide of presentation. And I will take the next few minutes to answer any questions you may have. So go to the chat box and submit submit any questions. Now, the information on this PowerPoint, I will lay this out in the PDF to, to prepare you for the next webinar to keep you and keep you in the understanding of the power of it, the basis of it. So every webinar, we will have a leave behind a PDF for you to digest. All right. As, as uh, the moderator put in, if you use your camera on your phone, you can scan the QR code and you can sign up for the next webinar. And this presentation will be recorded and placed on our YouTube channel. So please, again, if you have any questions so far, uh, what is, uh, so Marie asked, what is the purpose of removing the Facebook? What is the purpose of Facebook removing the like button? Because liking does not promote engagement. It does not promote engagement. They, they want you to follow. If you follow, you will see more posts from that page on your timeline. Liking does not do that. How many workshops will there be? For the basis of what we're doing right now, up to five, which is all free. And then we'll get into the extensive training, but we will steadily repeat and have webinars on industry changes in it. Our webinars will be on our website, yes, and our YouTube channel. And you do know you have more follows. So follows provide more engagement and it helps Facebook generate more traffic. So any any up any updates, any new platforms. And we will have, like I said, with video editing, it might take more than one more more than one video webinar. We probably have two or three or four 
when it comes to websites, we might have a website development. We might have two or three webinars in there, but our goal is to some point where people can actually come to the station, go through our in, in person trainings. And also with this webinar here, please uh, submit comments on what you thought about the presentation today. All right, thank you, thank you, Jalen, if I pronounced that right. And also uh, take take a moment to visit PBS Western Reserve to watch our other programs. Go to our YouTube channel, stay in tune with it. Uh, download the app on your phone, watch our additional programs that we have on the phone. Um, if you don't see PBS Western Reserve, if you actually <clears throat> make a donation, you have the app. They do have a live platform to what you may see on television. But again, all the webinars, the webinars will be free. All right. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Miss Miss Hill. Thank you, Marie. Again, any other questions? I'll be we deliver uh, uh, next few minutes, and we will answer any questions that you may have. No, you said we, uh, the Nick, you said uh, we can change the like to follow. Facebook will remove the like button. Shortly, you won't even see a like button. You will see follow. My photos in the way. Whoop. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. The floating video. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Well, hopefully everyone who's in attendance today will sign up for the next one. Thank you, Jeffrey. All right, if you have any more questions, uh, thank you for attending. And again, you next webinar, we will start lessons on providing content for the web, right, effectively. And if you want to email me, you can email me at fbarrett, F-B-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, at pbswesternreserve.org. Again, if you want to email me with any questions or any other tips along the way, you can email me at F Barrett, F B A R R E T T, at pbswesternreserve.org. Or you can just go to our website and look it up our, our staff and listen. And I'm listening on that page on our website as well. And I'll put it, actually, put it in the chat. All right, if there's no other questions, then this webinar has come to an end and feel free to contact me. If you have any other questions and sign up for our next webinar. All right, thank you for attending. You're welcome everyone, Ms. Floyd, Mr. West. All right, everyone have a good day today.